and headlines from across the globe. For one dollar sick per day, only on your AfriCell line. Welcome back to GRTS News. Time now to take a look at the international news. Heavy flooding in northern Cameroon has killed dozens of people and forced thousands out of their homes. In addition to international aid, the Cameroonian government has chipped in 50,000 euros to help the victims. The situation, as we hear in the CFI report, is compounded by rising water levels at a local dam and difficulties in assessing badly hit settlements. North of Cameroon has been underwater for the past three weeks. A number of villages are completely swamped. People are able to get around only in small boats. Official sources say these storms have killed dozens of people and thousands of others have been forced to flee their villages. The displaced people are staying in camps such as here in Maga near Marua. There are shortages. This is what they gave us. Three sacks for an entire village of 10,000 people. This is one plate per family. This is not enough. Oddly enough, there are also shortages of water. A well is being dug near the displaced people's camp. International aid is trickling in. On Wednesday, the Turkish ambassador paid a visit to the camp. We have tried to bring in medical supplies to help the mothers and children. And we try to ensure that the children continue attending classes. The government of Cameroon has allocated an emergency fund of some 30 million CFA francs, or about 50,000 euros. The money was distributed to people directly by local officials. That comes to about 12,500 CFA francs per person, or about 25 euros. Most say that amount is pitifully small. Local officials also paid a visit to the dam structure holding back the Longoni River. Built in 1952, it is being called weak. We are worried about this because the water level in the river continues to rise. And there are certain spots where the water has reached the level of the dam. Officials are also having a tough time getting to the villages hit by flooding. President Bia visited the Marua region. The press in Cameroon said he had taken his time getting there. A double suicide attack on a Mogadishu restaurant has claimed the lives of at least 14 people, including three journalists. And 10 days after the attack on the U.S. Embassy in Benghazi, Libyan and American authorities have paid tribute to the big victims of a remembrance ceremony. At actually, at a remembrance ceremony. We have details of these and other stories in this African News Roundup. At least 14 people died and 20 were seriously injured in a double suicide attack against a restaurant in Mogadishu. Three of the victims were journalists. The attack was one of the first to target several new upmarket restaurants recently set up by the Somali diaspora. Shabab supporters claimed responsibility, saying they were angry with the presence of foreign troops in Somalia. A minute of silence and a lot of emotion. In Tripoli, 10 days after the attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libyans and Americans paid tribute to the victims. Among those killed in the attack were four Americans, including the U.S. ambassador, Christopher Stevens. We have lost a brilliant ambassador, full of courage and skill and passionate determination to help Libyans, to help all of you, to realize the promise of your revolution, to make a reality of a free Libya. Ethiopia has a new prime minister, a 47-year-old intellectual, Haile Mariam Dessalegn, and his deputy took the oath of office during an extraordinary parliamentary session. The new prime minister promised to reinforce democracy and improve the country's human rights record. He is succeeding the late Meles Zanawi, who remained in power for over 20 years. They were wearing red, red as in rage. Thousands of them took to the streets of Lome, civil society activists and supporters of opposition parties. These women wanted everyone to know they were fed up with poor Gnasingbe. Acting as part of a newly formed collective, they demanded political reforms, including limits on presidential terms. The women said they would not be intimidated by those who want to silence them. 
all eyes were on the Middle East this Friday, a day of prayers in the mosque in the Muslim world. It has also been a day of protest, and in parts of Pakistan, there were demonstrations and growing anger over an amateur video that denigrated Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We now look at this report from CNN. It's been an ugly day for Pakistan, Christie. We certainly expected to see demonstrations today. We didn't expect them to start early in the morning. That that's exactly what we saw. And frankly, we're having a very difficult time keeping track of all the demonstrations in cities like Lahore, Peshawar, Islamabad, Karachi. Dozens of people reportedly injured. A hospital official telling us the driver of a news van shot and killed in Peshawar. And the day is not over yet. It's 5 p.m. local time. More demonstrations are expected throughout the rest of the day. In Pakistan, deepening concern for an explosive day of protests. For the second Friday in a row, hardline religious groups have called for anti-Western demonstrations on a day declared by Islamabad as a national day of love for Islam's prophet Muhammad. By 9 a.m. local time, small groups of protesters had already torched toll booths, looted stores, and clashed with police in several cities. Friday's demonstrations come a day after hundreds of protesters, many young men in their teens and 20s, tried to storm the capital's diplomatic enclave, a secured compound that houses foreign embassies. In Karachi, Pakistan, several teachers led roughly 100 elementary school children on an anti-American demonstration. The teachers chanted slogans against the West. The students chanted back. The demonstrations have been small, but growing in number and intensity. Both Islamabad and Washington taking extra steps to ease the rising anger. On Friday morning, <laughs> cell phone service in parts of Pakistan was cut off. An apparent effort to hamper the rallies. On Pakistan's radio and television airwaves, an ad paid for by Washington featured President Barack Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton calling for calm. Since our founding, the United States has been a nation that respects all faiths. We reject all efforts to denigrate the religious beliefs of others. But there is absolutely no justification to this type of senseless violence. The United States government had absolutely nothing to do with this video. We absolutely reject its content and message. America's commitment to religious tolerance goes back to the very beginning of our nation. Elsewhere, in Iran, a senior cleric reportedly upped the bounty for the killing of author Salman Rushdie, whose book, The Satanic Verses, sparked global protests more than two decades ago after the late Imam Khomeini declared it an insult to Islam. Yes, there's this stupid film, you know, and the correct response to a stupid film on YouTube is to say it's a stupid film on YouTube and you get on with the rest of your life. You know? So to take that um, and to deliberately use it to inflame your, your troops you know, is a political act. That's not about religion. That's about power. When asked why the Pakistani government decided to declare this Friday a national holiday, in many ways it's inviting people to come out and protest. The foreign minister here in Pakistan Pakistan told CNN that the government had to address public sentiment. Christy, I think to say that's a decision that many will criticize in the days to come. Well, time now to take another break. When we come back, we'll take a look at sports. Stay tuned in. <laughs>